The Early History of the British Isles by Anno Sensei. Celts, Romans, Anglo-Saxons, Vikings and Normans. My story begins more than 6,000 years ago when a group of people living in an area corresponding to what is now called the Ukraine started to move into other areas. In 4000 BC or thereabouts, they started to move eastwards and a group of them ended up in India. This was the first of a series of migrations that went on for thousands of years. Because they spread across Europe and also into India, they are known as Indo-European. This is the origin of all the groups that I'll be talking about today, the Celts, the Romans, the Anglo-Saxons, the Vikings and the Normans. Although they had a common origin, these different groups had very different cultural characteristics. I'll start with the Celtic people who first arrived in Britain three or four thousand years ago. The English take their name from the Anglo-Saxon, but the Celtic people have been living in Britain for far longer than the Anglo-Saxon people. Before the Anglo-Saxons arrived, the country was divided into three main groups. The first group, which arrived some three to four thousand years ago, was the Brythonic or Britonic Celts, also known as the Ancient Britons. Then, about 500 BC, 2500 years ago, another group of Celtic people arrived called the Goidelic or Gaelic Celts. Their culture, their language was rather different from that of the Brythonic Celts. And there's a third group of people about whom rather less is known. They may have been Celtic or they may be derived from an older group that was there before the Celts arrived. These people are known as Picts. Modern scholarship tends to consider them to be a type of Celt, so I will assume that. And then by the time the Romans arrived in 55 BC, what they found was basically a land that was occupied by Celtic people. It wasn't a, a single unified country, of course. Uh, all of these areas were broken up into much smaller kingdoms, but it was essentially Celtic. And the Romans took control of most of the area occupied by the Brythonic Celts, the ancient Britons, like this. Despite their immense power and their vast empire, when the Romans left Britain around about 410 AD, things were really fairly similar to the way they were before the Romans arrived. The main Roman influences were the roads, uh, the towns, which included London, Hadrian's Wall, which was built to keep the Celtic people out from the north, and Christianity. After the Romans left, the Picts, the Gaels, and the ancient Britons were left unprotected from invasion from other parts of Europe. The main invading groups were the Angles, the Saxons, and the Jutes, and they started to take over the lands of the ancient Britons. Many of the Britons who remained were forced into servitude, and others moved westward or left Britain altogether. This was the beginning of the country known as England, the land of the Angles, Angle land. And the people came to be known as Anglo-Saxons, and the language they spoke is called Anglo-Saxon, or Old English. The first Anglo-Saxons arrived in about 450 AD, and within about a hundred years or so, seven Anglo-Saxon kingdoms had been established. If we look at the geography of Britain, we can see that the Britons had been pushed into the more mountainous regions in the west. At this stage, Britain consisted of a number of kingdoms. The main Anglo-Saxon kingdoms were Northumbria, Mercia, Wessex and East Anglia, with the three smaller kingdoms of Essex, Kent and Sussex. By about 800 AD, the political map of Britain was looking something like this. We can see it was all divided into smaller kingdoms. The ancient Britons occupied the territories of Gwynedd, Powys, Dyfed and Gwent in what is now Wales, and Cornwall in the extreme southwest, although shortly afterwards 
Cornwall was assimilated into the Kingdom of Wessex. Scotland was divided into the Kingdoms of the Picts, Dalryda and Strathclyde, while Ireland was divided into Bulleid, Oryla, Inale, Connacht, Munster and Leilin. By this time there were four Anglo-Saxon kingdoms, Northumbria, York, Mercia and Wessex, and two areas, the Norwegian territories in the north of Scotland and the Danelaw in eastern England, that signalled a new arrival, the Vikings, from Norway and Denmark. At their height, the Vikings occupied a large area of Anglo-Saxon England and significant territories in other parts of the British Isles. Their main period of expansion was during the 9th and 10th centuries when they established control in various parts of Britain and the Danelaw spread itself right across the country. Things reached the point where most of England was under Viking control as well as significant parts of Wales, Scotland and Ireland. And then, during the first half of the 5th century, the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms united. This was partly in order to defend themselves against the Vikings. King Alfred the Great, who ruled England from 871 to 899, managed to save the country from being entirely under Viking rule. But the Vikings continued to control parts of the country, and from 1016 to 1042 there were three Danish kings of England. And then, in 1066, with the Saxon king Harold on the throne, Vikings attacked the north of England. Harold led an army northwards and defeated them. However, immediately afterwards, the Normans, who were French-speaking people of Viking descent from the north of France, invaded in the south. Harold's army, exhausted from battle and long marches, was unable to fight them off and England came under Norman control. The Battle of Hastings in 1066 is perhaps the most famous date in the whole of English history. Harold, the Saxon king, was killed. Many of the Saxon nobles had been killed at the earlier Battle of Stamford Bridge, and there was no one to replace Harold as the leader of the Saxons. The Normans won the Battle of Hastings, and the leader of the Norman army, William the Conqueror, took control of England. From now on, the Saxons were second-class citizens under the power of the Normans.